I look to you after all my strength is gone. <laughs> when there is nowhere else to turn, nothing else to do but to look up, that's all we need to do is to look to the Lord for he is more than able. So thank you, thank you, and welcome everyone to our joint Bible study on tonight. We are just so grateful that you are here. You have taken time out of your schedule uh, to, um, to come and to study God's word. And we are just so absolutely delighted, thrilled, excited uh, that you are here. The Lord is here. The Holy Spirit is here. And our pastor is here. And he is going to be presenting God's word to us on this night. And we are so grateful and blessed to have him to lead us. And so we are going to get started without any further ado. We are grateful to see our Deacon Pew with us on tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tell you. Amen. God is good. God is good all the Yay, time. And he sees us through the ups, the downs, the ins, and the outs. That's why we look to you, our God and our Father. And so we are going to ask um, Sister Renee if she would open us, please, uh, for our time to study tonight. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan, Sr. Renee. Yes, thank you, everyone. Can we all bow our heads and get ready for prayer? Lord, we thank you for us all meeting once again. We ask you to cover our pastor and those that's bringing forth the word. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing for us, all that you will continue to do. Bless us that our eyes, our ears are open so that we can hear your word mm -hmm. and our hearts are open so that we can receive your word. Lord, we thank you for all that you do. We will continue to praise you, bless your name, and be humbled servants. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Sister Renee and Dr. Dennery, and to all of you, good evening. Glad you are with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. So tonight, mm -hmm. I am excited about what we're going to be sharing and what's been on my heart and mine in regard to our Bible study. I did hear from at least one or two of you about something that you thought might be of interest uh, for our study. And I gave you an opportunity to do that, to put it in the chat. If you have some other thoughts you might want to share with us, go right ahead. I'm going to share with you, I was going to do the Bible study in a couple of ways tonight, but um, I, I really have to get going uh, like a hard stop at eight o'clock <laughs> because I scheduled an appointment and I have to get there. Uh, so I'm not going to do what I was thinking to do. What I was thinking to do was to ask you a few questions um, that would, and if you wanted to have a particular study that you wanted to share or ask, have an open forum so that you could ask whatever questions you might have on your mind about the scriptures. Uh, but I think what I'll do tonight in our study, and I'm going to launch a series around this particular study, you might want to just call it Back to Basics, Back to Basics. And when I say back to basics, I'm really talking about the fundamentals of our existence. I'm talking about the very core, the essence of why we are here on this earth. How many of you are just glad that you are living on the earth right now? Mm -hmm. You are glad to be living on the earth right now, living in this world alive with a reasonable portion of your health and strength, we're going to talk a little bit about what that all means. So when we when we start this series, it's back to basics. I'm going to give you uh, maybe a tool. I'm going to give you a tool tonight that you can use as you navigate all of life. Of course, I hope and pray that you have been taken advantage 
of the tool that has been given to you, which is called the habit of the spirit. Sometimes we get a little lax and we may do it and we may forget, but I, I really want to encourage you and I'll remind you. So if you haven't been doing it, I'm going to remind you to do it. If, if we have an opportunity tonight, I would like to walk us through that process just once again so that we can experience the, 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 the way that that habit of the spirit actually impacts our physical bodies, the way it impacts our minds, the way it impacts our emotions, the way it impacts our heart, just the way that we feel when we are engaged and sitting still and praying and helling, connecting with God, the love, the joy, the peace that he extends to us, and then sitting still with his word, inquiring how he wants us to live, and then being thankful for all that he's given to us. So we're gonna, we're gonna focus first on, first off with back to basics. And the first thing that I wanna deal with when it comes to the basics it has to do with the purpose for our being on this earth. What is the purpose for us being on this earth? We're going to use the word of God to guide us in our study. And I'm going to direct our attention when it comes to the purpose to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I'm going to be looking at uh, verse 13. So in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13, it says, that's the whole story. Here now is my final conclusion. Here is the purpose for being on this earth. Fear God and obey his commands. For this is everyone's duty. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. Verse 13, chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says that the purpose, when we talk about the basics of our existence in this world, it has to do with our purpose, which is to fear God, to reverence God, to acknowledge God, God over us, God in us, God working through us, to acknowledge God and to obey his commands. So how do we go about doing that? Here are your tools. Um, the first tool that I'm gonna give you is uh, when it comes to fearing God and, and obeying God's commandment, the very first thing that happens is having a spirit and a mindset of thanksgiving. Okay, we're going to look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm, I'm going to give you some scriptures. You can write them down, and perhaps in your um, you know personal time, you'll have a chance to go back and read, read the scriptures. But I'm going to take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to look at verse 18. And verse 18 says, uh, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So the first thing to do in terms of our existence on this, on this earth, in this world, in this time of our lives, the basics, the very fundamental, rudimental things, rudimentary things that we have to do is one, fear God fear God, and obey his commandments. And here is one of the key things. This is the first uh, thing that I want to give you as, as a tool to experience the fullness of life that God intends for us to experience, is to have a mindset of gratitude. You know what gratitude does to your life? When you have a mindset of gratitude, the things that happen around us and sometimes things that we don't necessarily care for, they seem so minute when we learn to just say thank you to God and to appreciate the things that he brings into our lives, the people. I'm grateful for each of you. I'm grateful that God allowed us together, together to connect in a, in a way that we can study his word together. There are millions of people, some of them are studying the Bible in other places, but there are millions of people who simply do not have the mindset to fear God. They don't understand what that means. They don't have the mindset of obeying God's commandments. They just don't know what it means to obey God's commandments. 
And the way that we think in our minds is the way that we live our lives out. So when you look at what's going on in our society around us, the way that people are conducting their lives, many of them are doing some really positive things, but many are doing very destructive things simply because they haven't developed the ability to be grateful and to be thankful for the mere fact that God has called us into existence. One of the things that caused me to think about this is I attended a funeral today and I was thinking as I listened to the things that was said about the individual whose service we attended, I was thinking about what made his life so meaningful. I believe what made his life so meaningful is this person had this ability, a purpose to fear God. And it, he wasn't a person who you would consider to be a religious person, uh, but he was what you would call a spiritual person. A spiritual person is not necessarily antithetical to a religious person. It's just that a spiritual person is connected on a level that may not be associated with a particular religious belief without a particular, it just a spiritual person is connected where the spirit of God is able to enter this person, flow out of their lives. As we just finished studying the book of James and James says, you, you tell me, you show me someone who has faith and I can show you that person who has faith by their works. The person who was able to do what Jesus's command said, um, he said, what is the greatest command of all? What is the greatest command of all? When, when the lawyer asked him that, what did Jesus say? Love. 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 Thy Lord, thy God, with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, with all mm -hmm. of your soul. So when you can see a person living in such a way that God's spirit is operating in them, I would call that person a spiritual person. Okay. Now you can be spiritual and religious, or you can be simply spiritual. I would say that a spiritual person actually connects with God in a spiritual way without necessarily embracing a particular set of religious tenets or beliefs. So you can have either of those things or you can have both of those things. But here's a person who really demonstrated uh, what it meant to be a spiritual person. So the basics for living life is to establish our purpose. What is our purpose for being on this earth when you wake up in the morning? What is your purpose for being here? According to Ecclesiastes. Fear God and Fear obey, and his, obey his commandments. commandments. Fear, God. Fear God and, and obey, his obey his commandments. Obey his commandments. When we When we fear God, when we really do trust God, when we believe that God has provided for us all that we need to navigate life. When we believe that what God offers in his written word, what God uh, guides us to do with the unction of the Holy Spirit operating in us, it, he's providing us with the wisdom to navigate all of life. He gives us the insight to work through whatever circumstances we have. Fear God, re re reverence God have respect for God, and then obey his commandments. That's the purpose. So how do we do that? One of the things that we do is every day. You know, when, you, when I was a kid, and probably most of you, we were trained before we ate our meals. Let me hear some of the things that you were taught to do before you ate your meals. Let me hear some of the words you were taught to say. Great. God is great. Great. God is great. God what else? God is good. Let us thank him for this food. Let us do what? Thank him. Thank you for this food. Thank him for our food. By his hand, we are fed. We are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Our daily bread. Even as children, we're taught how to have a grateful heart, to be thankful for the provisions that God uh, gives to us as we go through life. So learning to be grateful. Um, what are some of the things that you're grateful for today? Just life. Life. So, life. Mm -hmm. Air to breathe. Family. Air to breathe. Being Family. in my right mind. Right mind. Able to use my limbs. 
One more. Good health, reasonable health. Yes, yes, good health, good health, good health. Let us, let us thank God for those things. Father, we thank you in the midst of our time of studying your word for the many blessings that you've given to us, the air that we're breathing now, for the faces that we're able to physically see, for the voices we can hear. We thank you for a reasonable portion of our health and for our strength. We thank you for your word. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the sun that has shined today. We thank you, God, for the beautiful blue sky, for the birds that we've heard singing. We thank you for safety and travel. We thank you, God, for the peace of our minds that we have, for the love in our hearts that we have, for the joy that we have down in our soul. We thank you for your word, and we pray that you would receive our expressions of gratitude that we offer unto you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace toward us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can stop at any time to give God thanks. It doesn't have to be a long prayer, but you know, as you're driving sometimes, Lord, just I thank you. I thank Thank you. Because what does 1 Thessalonians say? It says to give thanks, right? To be thankful or give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. So I want you to make it a habit this week throughout the next seven days just to stop and every day just to give thanks. It's an excellent tool that will help you. And maybe throughout the day, not just once, but throughout the day, just to pause and give thanks for something you've heard, something you've seen, something that was in your scope of experience. It could just be the, the presence of the Lord that's in your space. You ever get in that space where you just mm -hmm. feel God's presence is there? You don't have to go to church to feel God's presence. You know, you can feel God's presence in your living room. You can feel God's presence in your kitchen. You can feel God's presence in your car. You can feel God's presence everywhere because there is nowhere where God is not. And there are times when we're really receptive to God's presence. And if you feel this presence, be mindful. I'm making a note for myself as well, to be mindful, to give thanks to God. That's that's the tool. This is a part of the tool that I'm going to give you. Now, you've just heard that. Um, the next thing that I want to share with you as it relates to our purpose for being on this earth, of course, we have Thanksgiving. Um, the next one that I want to give you is to be open to wisdom, to be open to wisdom, to be open, open to wisdom. We talked about the significance of wisdom and how we actually obtain wisdom. Of course, we, we get knowledge by studying, but wisdom, we get that by observing. We listen to what uh, Proverbs chapter three tells us, it says, joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding for wisdom is more profitable than silver and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you, this is what wisdom will offer you. Wisdom offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left hand. No matter which hand you grab a hold of, of wisdom, you're in good shape. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. And he goes on to say, by wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created the heavens. Here it is. Be open to wisdom. Wisdom is going to come to you every single day because wisdom is obtained by observing. And every day God is showing us something about how he has formed this world. Every day, every day. I, I'm, I'm so excited. 
uh, because I'm, I'm working on a series that I'm going to be launching that's going to be connected to this. This is essentially the the found the uh, preamble to the series that we're going to be working on. But when I think about how God just shows us what life is all about through everyday observations, wisdom is speaking to us every day. It will lead us down a path that is satisfying. So you want to be thankful. You want to make sure you have a thankful heart. And and what circumstances did uh, First Thessalonians chapter five say to be thankful in? Yeah, that's right, Sister Renee. I see you in all of them, all of them. Don't you think for one moment that a circumstance that may cause you some uh, some some ang anxiousness or that may be a difficult circumstance is not a circumstance that God already knew you were going to experience or encounter. God knew that you were going to encounter the circumstance that's challenging, and the reason that He instructs us to be thankful in all of the circumstances is God is going to show you through wisdom something that you would not have learned had you not been in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to be thankful and then we want to be open to wisdom. We want to be open to wisdom. Now, when God shows us wisdom, sometimes wisdom will help us navigate a situation that we wanted to handle in our own strength. And wisdom says, be still. Don't you open your mouth, sit still. I'm going to show you what I'm able to do when you sit still. The person you thought you needed to address may just discover as you are sitting still that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to that person and allow them to get what they need. OK, then there are times when God says, I need you to open your mouth. <laughs> I need you to say what is just and what is right. God will tell you when and he will tell you what to say as you're flowing in wisdom. So wisdom is critical. The next thing that is critical to our existence, and I'm just giving you a tool. So the first one is Thanksgiving. Uh, the second one is being open to wisdom. The third one when it comes to our purpose for being on this earth and how to experience the fullness of life, it really revolves around being obedient. Being obedient. Sometimes we hear what God is telling us to say, but we're not always as eager to obey what God is instructing us to say. I'm going to let you listen to this in uh, Deuteronomy. I want to read Deuteronomy for you. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Okay. I'm going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. Listen at this. Verse 26. Look, today I am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. You will be blessed if you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, that I'm giving you today. But you will be cursed if you reject the commands of the Lord, your God, and turn away from him and worship gods you have not known before. Obedience is really listening and determining in advance that you are going to follow the instructions of our God who has formed us for his glory. Remember what Jesus told his disciples over in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14? In John chapter 14, Jesus uh, says this, if you love me, obey my commandments. It's plain and simple. When God says it, he's saying it for our good. So in the Old Testament, God, uh, obedience is a is, is one of the, um, the themes that you find throughout the scriptures in terms of receiving blessings from God. Remember when Samuel was instructed to go in and wipe out an entire uh, group of people? And, and he said, but I was holding this offering. 
And God says what? But Sam replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. That's a first Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. One more time, first Samuel 15, 22. It is better to obey than to sacrifice. And of course, we just finished reading from out of James, the study of the book of James, James chapter one, verse 22 tells us, do not merely listen to the word, uh, so deceive yourselves, do what it says. So obedience is a critical aspect of our purpose for being on this earth. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So when we are to obey God, when we obey God, what happens is God brings forth life into our lives. You will never obey God and not find satisfaction, ever, ever. Because when you make a, a, a commitment to obey God, more so than making sacrifices, God will always bless you because you're walking in the will of God. That's where you will find your greatest degree of peace. So I'm just providing you with a tool that you can use. The first one is thanksgiving. The next one is being open to wisdom. Uh, the third one is to be obedient, okay? And a theme that flows throughout the scriptures. This is a theme that flows throughout the scriptures. We're talking about being back to basics. This is just going to bless your life. No matter what circumstance you find yourself in, uh, one of the things that was said at the funeral, and it's a, it's a belief of mine too. I'm not sure where, where he got it from or where I got it from, but I know it's not original. And that is, and I tell my wife this all the time, whenever she asks me to fix something, I say, sweetie, pretty much fix anything if you have the right tools. Sometimes you try to fix something and you don't have the proper tool, it becomes difficult to make the repair or to build what you need. So if you're going to live life in the most fulfilling way, you need to make sure that you know the purpose for life. Imagine reading a book, writing, imagine someone writing a book and they have no purpose. Let's talk about, <laughs> I'm sure we've all, we've all heard uh, people talking and, and they just go random. This is like a bunch of random thoughts and you have no clue where they're starting. You're not exactly sure when they're in the middle. You don't even know when it's going to end because it has no formation to it, right? That's extremely difficult to follow that. But if you have a purpose for writing, if you have a purpose for living your life, when you get to the end of your journey, you will know that you have lived your life according to a particular plan and purpose that God has ordained for our lives. So the purpose for our lives is to fear God and to obey his commandments. How do we do that? We do that by expressing thanksgiving for our existence. Sometimes circumstances may be a little bit difficult, but here's what first, uh, uh, Paul is writing in 1 Thessalonians. He says, be thankful for everything in everything, not for, but in everything, give thanks. You give thanks in every situation. He says, I've learned how to be high. I've learned how to be low. I have found out it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you have a, a mindset of thanksgiving. And then you have to have an open mind. Sometimes our conditioning, the way we think about things can, can limit us from experiencing what God desires for us to experience in our lives. God may put you in an extremely, I've been in some difficult situations and it made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. I'm looking at God like, God, you could have just done this a totally different way. And after I've gone through those circumstances, I've learned that the hardships, the pain, the suffering was designed to, to, uh, to smooth out some of my rough edges. So now I'm a little better at loving people. Okay, I'm a little better at being patient. And that's the next thing that I want to tell you that 
throughout the scriptures, what you will find is love is a major theme throughout the scriptures everywhere in the Old Testament and the New Testament. When they said, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment of, of all? What did Jesus say? Love God and love your neighbor. Yes. And then what did Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? And now abide these three things, faith, hope, and what else? Love. Love. But the greatest of these is what? Love. love. So once you learn how to love, the Bible tells us quite a few things about love, right? So uh, one of the things that the Bible tells us about love is that, that love is unconditional. So when you, when you are genuinely loving someone, you don't love them because of what they have done or who they are, but you love someone because the love of God is in you. You're loving them because God's love is flowing through you. And when God's fl love flows to you, God loved us while we were yet sinners. It wasn't our righteousness that made God's love enter into us, but it was God's love, unconditional love that flows into our hearts. What else does the Bible tell us about love? Genuine love. Love is patient. Mm -hmm. You ever have a, a person that is just really pushing you to the limits? Mm -hmm. A situation mm -hmm. where you're like, oh man, I don't understand how much longer I got to deal with these folks. And God is saying, mm -hmm. remember, I mm -hmm. love you. Remember, you weren't always where you are today. Remember that I was patient with you. And when I think about how patient God has been with me, some of the things that I've said, uh, some of the things that I've thought, some of the things that I've done, and God says, I was patient with you. So what gives you the right to think that someone else should be further than you think they should be when I'm still working on you? You're, you're not where you need to. I, I consider myself a loving person, right? And then, uh, but then God always brings situations into my life that, that lets me, that reminds me that I have not yet arrived. I'm still pressing toward the mark. It's like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, God says, I want to teach you how to love even as I have loved. Okay. So love is sacrificial. Uh, greater love has no one than this, than that they would do what? Lay down, down their lives life life life. for one's friends. Mm -hmm. This this teaching uh, helps us to understand that when you love someone, it's going to require a sacrifice. There's a piece of you that you have to give up. You got to release a part of your own existence in order to fully love someone. If you're holding on to everything that you think is valuable to you, then that tells me you haven't yet learned how to fully love. Jesus laid down his life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Now you can't do that. And I can't do that. The only way that we can love this way, and this is what we learn in, in Galatians chapter five, is that love is a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You are not capable in your natural mind of loving the way that God instructs us to love because the natural mind is always trying to analyze and weigh and measure and discern if the person we are loving is capable of receiving the love that we desire to give to them, or if we're even able to provide the love that we want to give to them. We have spouses, we have brothers and sisters, we have mothers, we have friends, we have children, we have brothers and sisters in Christ, our spiritual, we have cousins. All of these individuals are worthy of our love because God has put them in our lives in order that we might allow that love to flow freely through them. When they get on our uh, last nerve, when they push us or stretch us, to the place beyond what we think we're capable of enduring, remember to give thanks. 
to give thanks. Lord, this is difficult, but I thank you because you're going to show me through this difficult situation how I am to grow and become better as a person. So I'm going to give thanks. And then I'm going to be open to discerning and receiving the wisdom. I'm watching. I'm watching because I can't figure this out on my own. But I'm sure you're going to show me the way that I can do this in a way that ultimately brings glory to you. Because my ultimate purpose is to reverence you, to fear God. If you allow this situation, if you allow this person in my life, even though I lack the resources to manage it, um, you know, smoothly on my own, I believe that you will give me the wisdom because the word of God says, if you lack the wisdom to simply do what? And uh, we all know that. Ask. Ask. We need to ask. Yeah. And when we ask, we have to ask until we get what? An okay. answer. So if I don't know how to work through this situation, I got to keep on asking until I figure out how to work through this situation without doing more harm or damage in the process. So I got to be still. And I got to wait and then I have to be open. And then I can't let my mouth get me somewhere where I can't get myself out of. So I have to be obedient. I have to listen to the word of God. I have to be slow to speak uh, and, and slow to anger and slow to speak before I speak some words that I can't pull them back. I can't unring it. I can't call them back. I can't unshoot that arrow. I just have to be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. So I have to be obedient. I got to be obedient. And then I have to be loving. So what are the ways, one of the ways I can be loving is rather than becoming impatient with the person, I can be, become patient and also pray for them. Take a po I take a moment, I pause, and I sit still, catch my breath. Sit still, I pray. Lord, yeah. my sister has pushed the wrong button. Wow. My brother has overdone it this time. And I'm angry. Yes. I'm angry. But your word tells me to be angry, but sin not. Right. Guide me, God. I'm inhaling your peace. My mind is all tore up, but I'm inhaling your peace. I'm sitting still. I have to be anxious for nothing. I'm sitting still. I'm praying and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep my heart. Now I'm balancing back out. I read his word. Now, Lord, I'm praying that you will show me how to handle this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm thanking you in advance because the answer is already given. I'm praying that I might be open to receive the wisdom. I'm giving you thanks. I want to obey. Teach me how to love so that your love flows through me into this person to restore them to all that you've called both of us to be. In Jesus' name, oh. I, and I give thanks. You see that? See, I just went right, that season. see how that tool works? That tool works when I find myself outside of a place that I can manage on my own. Now I know how to give thanks. I know how to be open to wisdom. I learn how to be obedient. And I learn how to love. That's T for Thanksgiving, O for open to wisdom, O for obedience, and L for love. So now I have a tool. I got a tool that I can use as I'm navigating my way through life, understanding the basics of fearing God and obeying God's commandments okay so i said i was going to give you a tool now you have a tool you have a tool that you can use and you can use and incorporate the habit of the spirit in the use of that tool it'll calm you down you know you get all you know you, you're sometimes our emotions get us riled up 
and our thought processes and the way we think it should be and the way we are processing it gets all distorted. And God is saying, I have all of that already figured out. All you need to do is use this tool and you can get that thing uh, repaired, restored, transformed, and ultimately bring me the glory. That's the reason why I have you here on this earth. Just be what I've ordained you to be and become. All right. So I'm going to leave it there to see if there's any questions or comments that you might have as we interact with the information that was given. And if not, um, we'll close out. Not not a question, but just just a um, I guess a comment. Um that that was pretty nice. <laughs> I mean, because it was so simple. Um, um and and then having the example of using it and incorporating the tool with the habit of the spirit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate that because of its simplicity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dennery. I'm always excited when I can present something simply. It's, it takes a lot of work. That's not the way it comes out of my, that's not the way it hits my, my mind. <laughs> yeah, we know that, Doc. <laughs> we know that. You get it simple. That's that's good. But uh, somebody said, put it where the goats can get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't see any hands up. Okay. All right. So let me ask let me ask this question based off of what you've heard tonight. Was there any area where you find it more challenging that you think as you go through this week you might need some extra prayer? I can make a list for uh make a note uh for any areas where you might need some extra prayer. Yeah, I do. Open to wisdom. And only because sometimes instead of listening and using the wisdom, you just want to react. So taking the time to stop and think before reacting and listening, actually listening to the wisdom and doing, you know, what's instructed, what comes with it. Sometimes it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you know, but yet you don't do because your emotions tell you something different. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, Sister Renee. I was uh, coming home today and someone was double parked and I'm thinking, that is so, like, it's this parking spot there. Why can't you just park? But then I had to stop and think, you don't know what that situation was. Like, just calm down. You don't know what the situation was. It could be an elderly person and had to get out. So I think like Sister Renee was saying, just taking that time just to stop and be open to wisdom is a challenge for me as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can pew. Yeah, and I also find out in life that every action does not require a reaction. Mm. So everything that happens, you don't have to react to it. That's wisdom right there. That's yeah. a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Good. And it's, that's exactly right, because even though you know that, Sometimes it just, you know, mm -hmm. so it takes it takes a lot sometimes to just stop, especially now that I find myself on the highway more and the driving that that takes a lot of this time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Very good. Any other comments? Okay. I don't see any, Dr. Dennery. Okay. Any yep. Okay.
All right. Well, um, we are always grateful to have um, Rise Community Church with us from Ohio. And um, but as a matter of fact, we're going to be joining them um, not this weekend, but next weekend. Uh, there are some of us that will be going out uh, to share with Rise Community Church. So we are going to ask um, Sister Teresa Boxdale from Rise, if you would be so kind as to close us out in our time today. And, and so glad that Pastor Delacan is also here with us. So uh, Teresa, if you could close us out, please. Awesome session tonight. Thank you, Pastor Dunnigan. Bless Thank you. you for helping us with our moving us from anger to anointing. God bless you. That is a universal message, can be taught, preached everywhere, anywhere. I concur with Dr. Dennery's comments. Dr. Dennery, thank you for your grace. This is a fantastic Bible study hour. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Dr. Delacan. Um, Lady Teresa, you need to unmute. Yes, good evening. Um, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for your words, a uh, strong word of wisdom and strong word of love and thanksgiving and those things in our lives that we need to continue to practice with. Father, we ask you to just continue to bless us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you do and all that we see from you are good. So, Lord, we ask that you use us for your glory. Bless families, bless those who were able to join us and those that were not. Touch mm -hmm. us, Heavenly Father, in your own special way. Mm -hmm. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, and we thank you for your patience and your perfect example of wisdom as it is. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. Amen. That's a joyful evening. God wants you to be joyful. Okay. So you can unmute so we can hear your greetings as we close out. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.